All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back here for week number three of Backyard Bookies. It was an exciting week. The NFL was back, Scott. College football week two. And could it actually, actually come to fruition that Texas is back? I don't want to believe it. Uh, I don't think most of us want to believe it, especially uh, our Aggie uh, faithful. Um, it was kind of a disastrous weekend for our uh, for our team, and then we got to see the uh, Texas Longhorns beat beat the team we want to beat uh, in a few weeks. Um, they could potentially be back. It's it's sad to say number four in the nation is maybe a little too high for me. We'll see. Uh, they might have some big games coming up soon to really kind of solidify that four spot, but. Man, beating Alabama, that's pretty big. Quinn looked really good, really threw some really good deep balls, and the defense kind of just kind of just shut them down. It was it was really uh, pretty cool to see. And and Jalen and, and Milrose probably bad. not as good as we uh, bad think bad. I don't I, I, I don't think Bama's very good. Honestly, I was coming in skeptical. We said kind of don't touch this game. It was seven and a half. Texas, easy, you know, 10-point win on the road in Tuscaloosa. This is a bad Alabama team. We knew they were vulnerable. I think the SEC is down this year. Uh, obviously, they're not going anywhere. Everyone wants to say this is the end of the SEC. It's just a down year. Alabama's defense not making plays on Texas was the biggest surprise after Texas got kind of bullied by Rice in the first half uh, week one. So that was the big surprise. Quinn Ewers, kind of guy who's like really plays to his competition, it feels like. So if he's playing a good team, he's going to step it up and bring it. And if he's playing a bad team, he's just kind of like aloof or whatsoever. But like you said, coming up, Red River shootout, Oklahoma, that's an elite defense. My Sooners cashed out for me last weekend. But let's just get into the scores. You added another point on me. You're up 6-3 to three on the season. Now, we got three weeks left, including this one, so I can make that ground up. It's two winning weeks for you in a row. I caught some awful beats last week, missed my parlay by two passing yards in that disaster of a Washington game, and my upset, my upset was this close, this close to cashing, and the Duckies end up with one of the worst covers ever if you're a tech supporter. But let's just hop right into it. Hopefully you picked the right number of games this week. What's your first one for us? Yeah, I, uh, I double-checked to make sure. Um, it looks like I picked three games, a dog, and a prop. So I think we're good to go this week. I have a bunch of honorable mentions this week too as well. But uh, yeah, to start off, really the slate of games this week isn't, that great. Bad week, I'd say the bad week. Biggest, the, biggest, the biggest game this week's maybe like LSU Mississippi State. That's even then that's okay. Well, I'll I'll tune into it, but nothing that special. But um, could be a pretty boring week in college football. But we still got best to play. So our first one uh, is going to be BYU Arkansas. Mm. Um, Arkansas is a pretty high um, time of possession team. Um, I'm not sure what they rank, but I know they run. Obviously, they run the ball really well. BYU. I, I mean, I watched them against Sam Houston State. Keaton Slovis isn't the USC quarterback he once was. Uh, he's not really, not really scoring as many points as they should. They played Southern Utah, scored 41 last week, but I still am not that impressed by them. Their over under was 46. They barely got that, just with Southern Utah as a 16. Um, I like the under in this game, uh, 47 and a half. I think the clock's going to tick, and especially with that new rule, um, with the first down rule, um, that could be even more. If we're playing time possession, we're going to play a bunch of first downs, and the clock is going to tick, 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 tick. I'm saying it's going to be see eight and a half points for Arkansas as a spread, maybe like a 28 to 10 game, something like that. I don't think I don't see BYU scoring too much. Maybe. Uh, Couple of field goals on top of that potentially, but uh, I like forty-seven and a half. I have that both ways. Yeah, it hadn't changed since I um, since I took my pick. So yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, BYU Arkansas under forty-seven and a half. I, I like it. There's a few. You know, we're seeing a lot of teams kind of not adjust to the running clock thing. A team like Michigan. Michigan's been an awful bet this year to cover because they just don't run up the score. They run the football and let the clock be bleed. So teams that are kind of just letting that clock run out, shorten games. I like unders. Unders, I think the Vegas hasn't quite adjusted to the tempo of game yet. I think we'll probably see it here by next week or if not the start 
or the end of September, just because we'll start getting into conference play and we'll really see how teams are going to want to balance these things out. I went a little off, you know, I did something different for us this week. Uh, I got us a first half spread. I'm going off the deep end, something we haven't done on the show yet. Penn State at Illinois. This is a juicy game for me. Penn State at Illinois. Illinois is not good. Cashed out on the, against them last week. They got smacked around by Kansas. Kansas stopped playing in the second half, and they still covered. And I think they scored like 16 straight, Illinois, and they were just useless as useless can be. But Penn State might be looking ahead next week. They have a decent game upcoming, I think. I think it's Iowa next week for Penn State, so they might be looking a little bit ahead. So I don't love the 14 and a half. They might pull off the gas early. But seven and a half for the first half, love this line. I think Penn State rolls out to an early lead. A couple touchdowns, not that difficult. I even almost went first quarter minus six and a half. No problem I see them having a touchdown lead. But just in case they get off to a little slow start, it is the Fox Big Noon kickoff game in Illinois. So they might have a little bit of, you know, hype or whatever the crowd might be getting rowdy up there in Illinois but I think like six people show up to their football games and honestly this is just a it's just a quarterback difference right like Penn State has what feels like an elite quarterback in Illinois I don't even know who Illinois quarterback is and he was pretty awful against the Kansas defense who's not good so this is a quarterback mismatch I expect Penn State to roll through this game maybe they give up a late score to get not cover at the end of this game because they're going to pull the dogs off I think And it's nice to have James Franklin as your head coach. He's a guy who is aware of spreads. He does play to cover. He knows the saying, good teams win, great teams cover. So he does want to pour it on. I expect Penn State to have a three-touchdown lead heading into halftime, maybe a 17-point lead, easy cover at the 7.5. So first half, Penn State minus 7.5. Yeah, I like the the change of pace. We haven't uh, haven't picked a a half uh, over under, so uh, I do like that. Illinois didn't look that great against uh, against Kansas. Uh, the only maybe wrinkle is they're playing in Champaign, but it, I, don't, I don't really see that being much of a um, much of a factor. Really, I, I can see the first half um, over covering, so I like that pick. For my second pick, um, like I said, not great games out there this week. Um, I'm going with. Air Force and Utah State. This was an uh, honorable mention. Honorable mention for me. Love this pick. Honorable mention from you. So Utah State uh, played Idaho State last week, put up a boatload of points, I think like 78 points or something like that. Uh, where is it at? I'm trying to pull this up. Yep, here. 78. 78, 78 against Idaho State. Idaho State. Um, who, who is bad? And then <laughs> Iowa, they put up kind of a stinker, uh, 14. I don't think Iowa uh, – sorry, I don't think Utah State um, can – can defend against the Air Force run game. Um, Sam Houston showed they. I mean, sorry, not Sam Houston. It was a uh, they play. Try to pull this up here. Yeah, it was Sam Houston. Sam Houston. They Sam uh, Houston. only put up uh, thirteen against them, but they. Um, you know, it was sort of like the same thing against um, against BYU. They played a pretty good defensive game, um, but ended up losing. I like. I don't think Utah State's that great, and I don't think. Uh, they're going to be able to cover the nine and a half. So I'm taking Air Force minus nine and a half. Um, just kind of a beat down. There's going to, I think there's going to be a, f- a few fluky runs that end up uh, going for touchdowns. Uh, maybe four, maybe two of them that are going to go, you know, the distance, you know, 30, 40 yard run that Utah State's not ready for. Um, and I think that's 78. Idaho State, that's kind of a fluke. Obviously, Idaho State's not going to play anybody and they're pretty terrible. So, um, I like Air Force uh, minus nine and a half uh, versus Utah State uh, head to head. Yeah, Utah State's uh, won the last two, but um, Jordan Love was probably the quarterback. So, uh, I I, 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 I love this pick. Love this pick. Uh, this was my honorable mention. Um, yeah, Utah State. You know, not good. I don't think they're good. Air Force. Their defense is. Elite. They're the number one defense in the country. First against the pass, second against the run. Yeah. They they are the best defense in the country so far. Now you can talk about the competition. This is a legit squad. They're gonna shut shit down. Um, it even moved. I had it at nine yesterday, so it's even gone up a half a point. No, the magic number is ten there, so you're fine at the nine and a half. I think 
Yeah, just a dominant defense. And Utah State, they stat padded a lot against a terrible Idaho State team, a team that hasn't won an FCS game in something like two years. They are just awful, and this is a perfect, I mean, I wish we planned this out because we couldn't have done it any better than this. A perfect transition here because this Idaho State team, or this Idaho State team gave a game to San Diego State. San Diego State. They're going to Corvallis this weekend, and I am a big. I got this one on an honorable mention as well. Big. Look at us. We're 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 in sync here. I am loving the Beavers this weekend. I think DJ at quarterback for Oregon State has really transformed this offense. He is a lot better than he what he's been at Clemson, and now maybe that's a Dabo thing. Like Cade Klubnik has not looked great through his first game and he wasn't really good at all in the first three quarters last weekend I know they ran that score up but that score was 21-17 in the second half so I I don't think San Diego State is good they're awful they're living off of pedigree normally this is a team with an elite defense that shuts people down Idaho State who you just said lost 78 to 10 or whatever it was to Utah State gave this SDSU team a game in San Diego State now it is in Corvallis so maybe The sun, like normally the sun is a thing. That's all the advantage. But man, I love this Beavers team. I think this offense is great. I think San Diego State's worse. Just looking, they're like the 124th ranked passing offense. There you go. One of the worst passing offenses in the country. Oregon State, 34th on defense. They're 6th against the run. San Diego State's running is the only thing they can do. 56. This team is not going to score against this Beavers defense. So I'm going to swallow the points. It's a big number for this late into the season. I should say three weeks in, we're deep. 24 and a half is a big number. I have no problem swallowing this. I think the Beavers are a sneaky, sneaky good team in the Pac-12. And maybe the Pac-12 is the best conference. It certainly feels like the most competitive conference amongst the top teams. Maybe they're not the best overall, but they're a fun conference to watch. I love the Beavers here, so I'm going to take the Beavers minus 24 and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I love DJ. I've, I've, I've watched him the last two weeks, pretty much the entire games, both ways. He is uh, he's he's a different man from when he was uh, the quarterback at Clemson. I feel like I feel like playing at Clemson is kind of like playing in a church. Um, <laughs> some people don't uh, don't do so well when uh, you have that kind of. Um, atmosphere with you um dabo do just want, he's, do we want some dabo hate right now do we want to hate on dabo uh, right he now? raises the word man he's all about the word some people just don't uh don't do well in atmosphere he transfers over to to corvallis with nike and swag and completely on the other side of the world from clemson and he's uh he's playing really well and i think he barely even played the second half last week so um i love dj i love that pick um yeah, I, 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 that was one of my honorable mentions as well. I almost uh, almost picked it. I'm glad I didn't because I don't really want to pick the same picks as you. Uh, just to, <laughs> just for the just for the uh, you know the the respect of the game here. We don't like we it. don't want to pick the same. Um, We're working yeah, out I love here. That. I'm debating changing one of mine. Oh, but I like uh, your the snap changes mid mid usually... mid mid pod. I'm thinking about changing one. I think I'm gonna keep it. All right. This one is a, kind of a scary one. I'm taking a big risk here. But, uh, yeah, Boston College is playing Florida State. Uh, mm. Florida State looks great. Boston, Boston great College is not. Not so Jordan much. Travis is incredible. Um, great two wins. LSU uh, and looks like uh, Southern Miss beat, the, beat down on Southern Miss last week. Man, 89% of the bets are on Florida State, I think, because of that reason. Um, just, just great offense, great quarterback play. I'm going to take Boston college. Plus, I had, had him at 28 when I picked it. Um, I don't obviously don't see Boston college winning the game, but I also don't see them winning by four, uh, Florida state winning by four touchdowns. I see maybe three and a three and a field goal or, uh, maybe three and a missed two point conversion, uh, sorry, four and a missed two point conversion. Um, if Boston College puts up 17, that's that's a that's a pretty big number for um, Florida State to have to to put up to cover that. They are on the road um, in Boston, so that's really what I have. Also, under over unders 48, so they're not expecting too much offense, um, especially for a you know Jordan Travis type game. He's he's killing it right now. He's put up over 40 in both games, 66 last week. 
Um, so 48 is an interesting number. Uh, then when you have a big spread like that, that just makes those points more valuable. Um, so I have it at 28. I can change it to 26 and a half. It's gone down one and a half since, uh, since yesterday when I looked. So um, regardless, I'm taking uh, Boston College uh, plus the number. So very risky bet. I was, I can, I can tell you in a little bit which, which one I was going to, was going to maybe go over, uh, switch to, but um, yeah, it's risky, risky play, but you know, gambling. This is scary. This is a scary bet. Boston College is dog shit. I mean, they struggled week one. I mean, they lost week one, I think. And then they struggled with Holy Cross last week. Like, Holy Cross isn't a bad FCS team, but it's an FCS team. Um, But Florida State, I will give it to you. Florida State might have a look ahead. They got Clemson coming up. This could be a blow them out in the first half, pull off the reins. We're getting ready. That's a huge game in the ACC. Florida State, you know, wins that game. Looks like they're going to be sitting pretty for a playoff spot. I know, and and besides besides Colorado, maybe because the public is so f- like just far to the side of Colorado. Besides them, when you see an eighty nine percent on one team, it's sometimes smart to go against the public and take the other team. That that's really the other other end of the the spectrum here. Eighty nine percent on Florida State. That's not that's not saying the money. That's just percentage of the public. So I I'd like to see. I doesn't say on action what uh, percentage of the money is, but that could be. Um, Interesting, but very risky bet. Uh, everyone's going to keep betting Colorado, and they're going to keep proving Vegas wrong, I guess. I hope they cover this week uh, because then they got Oregon next week. And, oh, the duckies, the duckies, duckies, duckies might send a real wake-up call into uh, Colorado. But I'm going to stay – I'm going to go to the Big Ten, stay in the Big Ten. Um, my first game was in the Big Ten. Syracuse at Purdue. Syracuse, I mean, I don't think anybody, including myself, thought this Syracuse team would be really anything, um, just kind of a fledgling bottom feeder in the ACC. But, man, have they impressed their first two weeks now. You can talk about the competition they've played. They played, like, Colgate, and I think they played Western Michigan, who's not bad. I mean, Western Michigan is okay. Um, but this passing attack, holy hell. Syracuse, fourth in the country, or sixth in the country in passing yards right now. They are slinging the rock all over the place. And this Purdue team is just not good. They just, they're not good. They feel flat. It's just, they're one and one. Who'd they lose? They got, they lost to a Fresno team who's another team I don't think is very good week one. They won last week barely against an abysmal Virginia Tech team. I know Virginia Tech's bad. So this is a Purdue team that's kind of just whatever. I, Love the orange in the spot, minus two and a half. On the road, it's a little risky. Big Ten, I'm going to Big Ten on the road games. You know, Big Ten has some weird stuff. But this is just a complete mismatch. I mean, six best passing offense, 124th ranked passing defense for Purdue. They're going to be moving the football up and down the field. Purdue is also one of the worst red zone defenses. So if Syracuse gets it inside the 20, they're hanging seven on them, or at least a field goal. Uh, This is just an awful mismatch. And the Purdue offense, they're really missing Aiden O'Connell. Now, he did, maybe they're not missing the turnover so much, but he was a good quarterback. We saw what he did in Vegas in the preseason. They just have no stability at that position right now. It's just kind of bad play all around. So this is a bad Purdue team and a sneaky good Syracuse team that I think, you know, does damage in non-conference, maybe comes back down to earth in the ACC. But I love the Orange here. Minus two and a half, it feels like I'm taking money from a baby right here. I just I think they blow this game out. Three touchdowns. Easy, easy cover, especially since it's in the afternoon. I think it's a 2.30. It's a 6.30 kick. So it's not even like those 11 a.m. Big Ten kickoffs where you see those. I think Syracuse is ready to roll. Well-coached team. I love the Orange here. Yeah, I can't say I know much about either team. Um, but like you said, if, if, if everything you said is true, that, that all makes sense. Quarterback play, obviously, is really big in, in, uh, in college. Aiden O'Connell, at, at least as a – as a college quarterback was, you know, he was pretty good. Like he, he did his job. He, he, he ran the offense. He was, he was formidable. And that's really all you need sometimes in, in college. So I, I don't know really much about either team, but um, yeah, two and a half points isn't too much to swallow. So um, I don't mind that pick at all. So, all right. Uh, do you want to do uh give us some, uh, give us some of your bet. Let's go with the uh, alternates before we hop into our props and our underdog. Yeah, so I have a few here. I didn't pick any NFL games, but Same. one of the honorable one of the honorable mentions. Uh, interestingly enough, 
is the New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys. Two great defenses. Uh, Jets might be um, historically good. They could end up being historically good. We can see. We can just see on that that front line. That secondary is just incredible. Uh, Dak is playing just dog shit in uh, in at MedLife and just playing in the in the in the dog shit environment with against the Jets. Water, rain, slush doesn't really do that much. His his defense pretty much did everything for him. Um, so. Although Aaron Rodgers is is dead, um, he is dead. I do like the New York Jets plus nine and a half. Maybe I, I'm saying probably a twenty three to fourteen game. So really, that hook I feel like is going to be the big uh, the big number. If it goes up to ten, then that's even better. Um, but the hook I think is what's really going to um, help this this game. Um, nine and a half is a lot of points in the NFL. I don't, I don't care who your, who your quarterback is when you have a run, decent wow. run game and. Um, you know, a good defense behind you. The 40 points was a fluke. 14 points. This. 14 this. points came off of, uh, actually, the I think block. it was 16 points. Right, right at the very beginning, 16 points came off of turnovers. So, um, yeah, nine and a half on that one. I liked your Oregon State pick, minus 24 and a half. Um, DJ's great. Love it. Um, this was one of the ones that I was sort of going back and forth with. I like Florida plus six and a half at Tennessee, or actually there it's at home uh, in Florida, in Gainesville. Um, don't really, I'm not that impressed by Tennessee. Joe Milton's okay. He's he's kind of like a Anthony Richardson type player, big arm. Um, doesn't really have, I don't think, a very good quarterback mind, but he's got a great arm, great athlete. Um, I don't know. I think I think just the atmosphere in Florida and Gainesville is it's kind of going to keep this game close. He's. I think Tennessee might still win by three, four, maybe. Um, but I think six and a half might be too much. So that's the other honorable mention. If you had something to say about that one, he's not running the offense like Hendon Hooker. So it's no. it's very clear. And but in good honesty, you can't put money on Grammar, a team quarterback by Grammar. You can't put yeah. money on that team. So that's why it's an honorable mention. Yeah, that's what I, I went back and forth. It was a start on my sheet, but then I took it off. I'm like, yeah, I, I've already I've already put a bet on Grammar, so that didn't go very well. <laughs> Never again. Um, and then it looks like I, I have two more. So I do have Colorado minus twenty three and a half after what just happened today. Um, yeah. Yep. I don't know why you're gonna say shit about Dion. Obviously, you know he's gonna come back and just he's gonna he's gonna run it down your throat all all four quarters. I don't care what the score is, he's gonna kick your ass now. So run it up, run good, it good up. Good job talking shit to Dion. Uh, he's gonna win by probably four or five touchdowns. I feel like um, at home against Colorado State. Good job, head coach of uh, of Colorado State. And then my last one, um, I like Washington minus sixteen um, at Michigan State. For more stuff that just happened recently, um, except Mike D'Antonio apparently is going to be on the sideline. Um, that could either hurt or help. I think it might help a little, but I, I didn't want to pick Washington because I know you've 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 been running the Washington train the past two weeks. I didn't want, I didn't want to take that pick from you. I'm um, nervous about I'm, I'm nervous about this Washington game. I almost took uh, Penix with the over in yards. But it's a big number. I think it's like 340, which is big. Michigan State's got a good pass. They got a good secondary. Um, it's going to be a weird game. Washington is, was getting points last year, and they blew out Michigan State. So this is a weird game, I think. I'm not sure. I just kind of want to keep my hands off it. I'm a big Washington guy, but you just don't know. Mel Tucker out, obviously. Not fired, but suspended. You just you just don't know. I don't want to touch that game. Uh, back to the Jets. Um, Cowboys love that pick. Uh, I almost took the Jets as my upset this week. Dak Prescott is not good against good defenses. Now, my only concern is they're going to... We'll get back to that in a second as well. Yeah. They're going to force... The only concern is Zach Wilson turning the ball over. Um, I just don't know what kind of game plan Nathaniel Hackett's going to have because he's kind of shit. I almost took Zach uh, Wilson under 30 and a half pass attempts. Uh, I think they're going to try and run the ball, but the Cowboys... Cowboys defense is so good. Like this is two elite squads, and the Jets are coming off a super roller coaster of emotion game. Highs, lows. It just takes a lot. Teams usually lay an egg the next week. Uh, but maybe this defense says, hey, F you Dallas, we're the best defense in the NFL, not you guys. So we could have some of that competitive nature. So I like that. Other NFL games, I love the Chiefs minus three and a half at Jacksonville this week. Ten days rest, Emma Holmes. And Andy Reid are lights out. It's a must win for the Chiefs. They have to win that game. Also, the Giants, minus th three and a half. It might be up to four. 
now at Arizona. You get beat 40 to nothing in this league, you're going to show out the next week. This is not college football where if somebody gets blown out, they're just bad, baby. They're going to show The Giants are going to show up this weekend. Arizona, not great on offense or, you know, they were okay on defense, I guess, but they just kind of, you know, I don't feel anything from Arizona. But let's get into your prop bets. Let's go ahead and run it out. Yes, yeah, so we've hammered this uh, this Dallas New York Jets uh, game, so I'm going to do it one more time. Uh, like I've said, um, New York Jets secondary is uh, close to probably historical coming up here in the next few weeks. They're going to be getting a lot of interceptions. Josh Allen obviously is pretty reckless, but um, he's throwing balls left and right, getting interceptions. He had three last week. Um, Dak has shown that last week. Uh, sorry, last year, what he has, 18 interceptions last year? Something like Tied that. Legally, tie for legally. Uh, I'm going to take Dak over a half an interception um, against the New York Jets this week. It's at plus 100. I'm like, wow, even money for this uh, against a team that is uh, spectacular on defense, especially on, sec- on secondary. He didn't do anything last week in the slush at MetLife. It was all defense in that game. So, um his stat line might have looked decent last week, but he did nothing. Tony Pollard also was uh, was great. So I can see Dak throwing a pick this week. Um, Sauce is going to get one. So I think uh, I think it's a great pick. Dak over a half a pick, plus 100. Like it, especially if the Jets can keep this game close. Dak forcing the ball. Even you get a hit, you know, you get a hit and it's like a fumble, but it's the guy catches it, it's a pick. You know, they might not even look at it. You can get one of those deflected balls by the D-line. Like you said, the sauce was not great against uh, Stefan Diggs last week. He was okay. So I expect sauce to bring it against CD this week. And Brandon Cooks is hurt. I don't think he's going to play. So not even good options at wide receiver. Potentially one more uh, honorable mention prop to look at. Geno Smith over one pick. Uh, five of his 11 interceptions last, last year were uh, against the Rams. So that's just something to think of. I, I don't know what the... I don't know what the um, what the odds on that is, I can look it up while you're saying your prop. But um, interesting to look at if Geno throws a pick. Um, but almost half of his interceptions were against one team. So, so interesting maybe, thing to look at. He's just bad against the Rams and maybe won't be so Potentially. bad. Potentially. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to the NFL for my prop. I struggled. There was a few I went back and forth with. But I'm going to bet on something that has never not happened in the NFL. And that's Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, in every career start he has finished, he has thrown two touchdown passes or more. Um, I'm getting minus 109 here for over one and a half touchdown passes. They're playing the Rams. I know everybody's back on the Rams train because they look great against Seattle. But Frisco was far and away the best team in football uh, last weekend. I thought they dominated a good Steelers team or team I thought was good at least. Maybe we'll find out. Um, But this San Francisco offense is amazing. They they do everything so well. It's just so much to deal with. You can throw a three-yard pass to McCaffrey or Debo or George Kittle, and it goes for 20, 30, 40 to the house. So he's got elite weapons everywhere, and he looked great. They were talking about him possibly being on a pitch count. No problems. Cruz last week. So, And another thing, they're playing the Rams. Kyle Shanahan is eight, has won his last eight against McVay, dating back to 2019. He's won eight straight regular season games. Only loss in that stretch was in that NFC Championship game. So he has dominated. I mean, that's his That's his son. Sean McVay is Kyle Shanahan's son. They dominate them. Niners own the Rams. So I love the Niners again this week. The number is eight. That's a big number. They haven't really covered big numbers, but they've won football games against them, even when they were bad. But Brock Purdy, he's thrown two touchdown passes or more in every single career start. Why would I bet against that? He's never not done it. So one and a half at minus one hundred nine for Brock Purdy on the touchdowns. Yeah, I like that. He's uh he's pretty steady. He gets the ball where it needs to go. Um, you know, Shanahan he's kind of sets up his offense in a way that sets him up for success. So I, I do like that pick. You just talked about the Rams. I'm a dumbass. Geno Smith has not played the Rams this week, so I just, played him last week. Played him last yeah, week. They played him last. I'm sorry. I'm I'm once again. How painful. I'm not on much. Bet against it. I, I thought you were well, going to bet against it. it. Under the in, under the inter- under yeah. the interceptions. Yeah, because they're playing the Let's Lions. The uh, the under is minus one twenty five. So all right, there you go. Not too bad. Uh, that's that's favored over the uh, throwing a pick. So just disregard the Rams thing. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> we've been zero and four on our um, money lines underdogs so far. Uh, 
And there's been upsets. There's been upsets galore. There has been all over the place. Um, Hoping to get one this week. This week I have Minnesota and North Carolina. (laughs) That's what I have. Damn it. (laughs) Let's run it. Tell us why we got the Gophers. I guess we'll go down with each other or go up with each other. Why do we got the Gophers? (laughs) Damn. I don't don't even have another one honorable mention on here. Neither do I. The Jets. We'll double dip. We'll go Jets (laughs) and Jets and Minnesota. (laughs) Damn it. Well, just uh, to go, just to go with, just to go with my, uh, well, I guess both of ours here. I don't, why do we, why do we North like Carolina the Gophers? Hasn't looked great. North Carolina hasn't really looked that great. I don't, I don't see them uh, being a top twenty-five team much longer. Um, App State somehow just puts up great games against good teams. Well, against Power Five teams, I don't know how good teams. Yeah, they're and they're really shitty in, in conference play. App State is an enigma when it comes to playing Power Five teams. Yeah. So. They have that going for them, and then Minnesota's two and zero. Great defense, uh, spectacular defense. Six and ten points the last two weeks. Obviously, Eastern Michigan, and Nebraska isn't a big, uh, two big teams, but I don't know. I, I feel like seven and a half might be too much for for Drake May and the boys. Uh, I have it at plus two thirty. I know it's two twenty five right now, but I had it at two thirty. Um, I. I guess I we can look for another one if we, we want to switch it up. Or we I, I like this. One. I'm okay. Let's just ride with it. Um, for us, the episode's running long anyway. I, I love this pick. This is two opposite teams. This is a great defense versus a great offense and a bad offense versus a bad defense. In those situations, defense tends to win out. I think Minnesota's defense might be able to slow down this North Carolina offense, make them struggle a little bit. You know, I know Drake May is kind of a good quarterback, they pushed around a South Carolina team that not great. I don't think Minnesota is going to get pushed around up front. Mac Brown likes to run the ball. They've historically had great running backs, uh, even though they have a great quarterback. I think it's kind of a slog for them. And maybe Minnesota's offense gives you just enough against a very not good North Carolina defense where you get a 17-21-17 game, 24-21 game, just kind of muddy it up, make things ugly. Maybe you get a pick six, a strip sack for a touchdown. I I, I like the Gophers here in this spot if we're going to take any dogs. There weren't great dogs this week, like a lot of big no. dogs. Like We talked about the Jets. The Jets are a fun one, I think, if you really just want to ride the train with Rodgers being out and kind of fade the Cowboys after a 40-point win. Um, maybe Mississippi State against LSU at home at that 11 a.m. kickoff. Uh, they're plus 280, but I don't think LSU's bad, and I don't think Mississippi State's good. They're running the ball more without Mike Leach, rest in peace, but bad in passing defense, and LSU's going to want to throw the ball. I think they really want Daniels to try and get comfortable before they really get into the heart of conference play, but whatever. We'll go down with the ship, or we'll be big winners. Like That's big winner week right there if we both hit the dog right there. Um, so run down your pet picks one more time and we'll wrap this bad boy up. All right. So we have uh, BYU, Arkansas under 47 and a half uh, air force minus nine and a half uh, versus Utah state. Uh, I got the, the risky one, Boston college plus 28 uh, at home against Florida state. Uh, the prop of the week is Dak Prescott over a half an interception at plus 100. And then, uh, Unfortunately, our dogs are the same. Uh, Minnesota plus 230 um, at home uh, against uh, North Carolina. All right. Um, <laughs> I just love that we had the dog. The dog of all picks being the same. Um, I got a Penn State minus seven and a half in the first half against Illinois. We're going a little bit off the reservation with that pick. We got Oregon State minus 24 and a half against the SDSU Aztecs. Go DJ. That's my DJ. Uh, And then we're going to go Syracuse Orange minus two and a half at the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue bad in pass coverage. Syracuse good in passing football. Uh, My prop of the week, something that has never not happened. Brock Purdy over one and a half touchdowns. And then our Gophers are going to take down the Tar Heels. You heard it here first. We're going to become big Gopher guys now if they win this game for us. But that's going to do it for us. Big Big time fans. I'll we'll, maybe we'll push it out there and they'll send us some swag. But <laughs> that's gonna do it for us this week. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you're not already. New videos every single day, every single Friday. Backyard bookies, and we will see you guys 
next week. All right, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you all what your thoughts are on this. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Share this video with your friends. It really helps the channel out a lot. If you want to support the channel more, click that join button or hit the link in the description and sign up for a channel membership. You get a lot of cool emojis and badges and stuff when you can use in our live streams during Monday Night Football games or any live streams. You get cool member shout outs, member only live streams. It helps support me allowing me to make more of this great sports content for y'all again like this video subscribe to the channel share it with your friends thanks for stopping by and i'll see y'all tomorrow